it's a very challenging period. Um, uh, it also clearly demonstrates uh, why uh, we need NATO. In Europe, the biggest security challenge uh, is um, uh, the Russian aggression uh, against uh, Ukraine, the illegal annexation of Crimea into the Russian Federation, the continued destabilization of the situation in eastern Ukraine. Uh, I encourage all parties to do what they can to uh, fully implement the so-called Minsk deal, uh, aiming at finding a peaceful and political solution to the problems. I'm very disappointed that we have uh, that we are ended up in that uh, we have ended up in that situation. Uh, we have done a lot to reach out to Russia, to include Russia in building uh, a Europe whole, free, and at peace. Uh, we have given Russia access uh, to uh, NATO headquarters. They do have uh, permanent representation to NATO at NATO headquarters. Uh, we have uh, established uh, something very particular, namely a NATO-Russia Council. Russia is the only country outside NATO with whom we have such uh, a council as a forum for discussion, consultations, decision-making. So we have done a lot to reach out to Russia, just to realize after the Russian attack on, on Ukraine uh, that Russia views this relationship differently. No NATO ally has any intention whatsoever to attack Russia. NATO is a defensive alliance. Having said that, we also have to adhere to the principle that each and every nation has an inherent right to decide its alliance affiliation itself. We cannot accept a world where Russia or any other country define a sphere of influence where they have the right to decide the destiny of their neighbors. That's simply not acceptable. We all hoped that the Russian occupation of uh, Georgian regions, uh, Abkhazia and South Ossetia, uh, was, an, so to speak, an episode, something, something temporary, an exception from the rule, uh, that uh, we had a partnership uh, between uh, NATO and uh, Russia. But after the Russian attack on Ukraine, uh, we have to realize that this is part of a bigger Russian master plan. Um, I think the ultimate Russian goal is to restore uh, Russian greatness, uh, re-establish a sphere of Russian influence in the near neighborhood and prevent its neighbors from seeking integration with the NATO and the European Union. And to that end, Russia it wants these conflicts to remain unsolved, simmering or frozen conflicts in Transnistria and Moldova, Eastern Ukraine, Crimea, Abkhazia and South Ossetia and Georgia, and I could add Nagorno-Karabakh uh, between Armenia and Azerbaijan. This is a series of frozen conflicts uh, and, and, and the Russian calculus is that as long as these conflicts are unresolved, it will be difficult for those countries to join NATO and the European Union. So it's very clear what it is about. I'm afraid it's difficult uh, to find uh, a lasting, sustainable uh, solution. I, I, I hope we could, because basically, I think the right thing would be a partnership between the West and Russia. We have so many common interests, so we should cooperate. But uh, watching what is going on in the Kremlin, uh, I'm concerned that this is a conflict scenario that will last for quite some time, in the worst case maybe decades, uh, just like the Cold War. So I think uh, the best way to avoid uh, or to prevent this conflict from being a cold conflict into becoming a hot conflict would be to demonstrate strong determination and strong deterrence so that uh, the Russian leadership wouldn't even think about attacking any NATO ally. Yeah, seen retrospectively, I think, in, in Libya, the United Nations should have deployed a peacekeeping force immediately after the completion uh, of, the, of the NATO uh, operation, because we were mandated uh, to, to, to do an air operation uh, only, 
and when it was completed, completed, we had to leave. So someone else had to take over, and I think the United Nations should have deployed a peacekeeping mission uh, to, to Libya. As regards Afghanistan, uh, seen retrospectively, I think we should have started much earlier to build a strong Afghan security force. We didn't start in earnest until uh, 2009, so it's been a very speedy process to build a security force of 350,000 Afghan soldiers and police. We should have started uh, much earlier. The future of our world uh, will very much depend on how China and the United States uh, cooperate, and I think it is in the interest uh, of the Chinese leadership to engage positively and constructively with the world's strongest power, uh, the, the United States. Uh, so that's how I see the perspective. So while there will still be uh, regional conflicts uh, here and there, overall I think uh, we are looking uh, ahead to a more positive and promising uh, future based on constructive cooperation between China and the United States.